Within the beautiful countryside town of East Haddam, Connecticut, lies the remnants of a once thriving mill community and Victorian era tourist attraction. But now its visitors have all but vanished, and its population has been reduced to zero. This is Johnsonville. So what caused everyone to abandon this once flourishing village? The story starts during the American Industrial Revolution, when small mill towns started sprouting up along rivers throughout New England. A man named Stanton Card, a pioneer of manufacturing interests in Connecticut, took note and saw an opportunity near a small cove off the Salmon River. In 1832, he constructs one of the first cotton twine mills in the area. But the mill wouldn't start to take shape until Emery Johnson came into the picture. Johnson married Card's daughter in 1838, and after saving up a few hundred dollars, he strikes up a partnership with Card for a stake in the mill. Johnson, by all accounts, was hardworking and as honest as they come. And he builds a home across the street to oversee the work of the factory. During its time, it was one of the most prestigious and spectacular homes in the area. At one point had sprawling gardens off the back. It's kind of one of those interesting pieces where you can walk into it and there's still the indoor outhouses off the back. He even offered use of the house to the community for acts of benevolence. This was a mill town, so when somebody would pass, they would actually do the viewings in the front parlor of the house. For the next 20 years, Johnson and Card put the mill town on the map as the twine capital of America. And after Card passed away in 1867, Johnson inherited the company, calling it the Neptune Cord and Twine Mills. He remodels Card's original mill, builds a post office, and names the area Johnsonville. Business went well for a time, and generations of Johnsons would walk the streets of the village. But after World War II, and with the advent of synthetic materials like nylon... This is a synthetic fiber. You mean we make cloth out of that? The golden age of twine was reaching the end of its rope. Then in 1965, aerospace gasket manufacturer and self-made millionaire Raymond Schmidt purchases the entire village of Johnsonville, mills and all. Ray Schmidt really had a dream, and his dream was to recreate this Victorian-era town. Schmidt had grand visions to breathe new life into Johnsonville. With the still-functioning Neptune Mills as his centerpiece, he planned to surround them with Victorian-era houses and make the village an historic tourist attraction. He found buildings that were up for sale or that he liked, and then he proceeded to disassemble each building and reassemble them on the grounds. Stables, a chapel, a general store, and a schoolhouse, all plucked from various corners of New England and moved to Johnsonville. Brick by brick, each building was taken down, numbered, and rebuilt on the site with incredible precision. There was a defunct amusement park in New York City called Freedom Land and all the rides were going up for auction. Well, he had the opportunity to buy this steamboat, and so he purchased it, and then his next issue was how do you get it to Johnsonville? Schmidt's eccentric dream was starting to take shape, but it wouldn't take long for that dream to unravel. In 1972, the flagship Neptune Mill was struck by lightning and burnt to the ground. And just like that, the lifeblood of the town was gone. Johnsonville was never the same. Schmidt would occasionally open up the property for weddings and other events, doing anything he could to rekindle interest in the village. During the holidays, Johnson would get decorated, but they took it to the next step, and they actually put mannequins in the windows of some of the buildings that weren't occupied. Schmidt's plans for revitalization were forever dashed. And in 1994, after a spat with East Haddam officials over zoning issues, Schmidt stated, I'm bailing out. I have to fight them all the way. I devoted all these years to making the place a show place. Schmidt was frustrated. He canceled all events, including weddings that were planned, and tried to sell the place quickly. But when he passed away in 1998, Johnsonville was left abandoned. Even today, the town is still looking for its next owner. An auction for the land in 2014 brought Johnsonville back into the spotlight with hope and wonderment of what it will become. Everybody wants to know what's going on at Johnsonville. Whoever does purchase Johnsonville will have the opportunity to re-envision Johnsonville and turn it into their dream. I think that's the beauty behind it.